In this video, we're going to talk about how to forward webhooks to a Jenkins controller running behind a firewall using ngrok. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. If you watched our previous video about using SME to pass webhooks from the outside world to the inside world, this is going to seem very familiar to you. However, one of the things that we ran into with SME is it is not meant for production usage. As we look at Ngrok today, you're going to see that it's a very different solution. Okay, let's level set where we're starting. I have a Jenkins controller running Jenkins 2.263.4, that's the LTS. I have an agent with a label of Linux. And then I also have a third instance that is going to be running our Ngrok client. So if you've never looked at Ngrok before, it gives you the ability to have a public URL for pretty much anything. You can use it to forward TCP traffic, HTTP traffic, TLS traffic. You can use it to do lots of stuff. And one of the great things is, is there is a free tier that's going to work perfectly for my specific use case today. The free tier may not work great for you, but for what I'm doing, it's more than enough. Now, I already have an account with Ngrok. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to that account. So I'm going to click on Login. And I've actually logged in with my GitHub account. There we go. Great. I am now install or now logged in. Let me bump this up a little bit. This walks you through step by step what you need to do. Now the machine I'm showing you right now is a Mac but the instance where we have the Ngrok client is running CentOS 7. I have already installed the Ngrok client on there by downloading this Linux binary. It's just a zip file that had the Ngrok binary in it, and that was it. So I put that over on my Linux instance, made sure it was in the path, and we'll take a look at it in a moment. Now, let me walk you through a couple of things here. You might be saying, wait, Darren, why are you showing me your auth token? right out here, plain and in the clear. Well, by the time you see this, this auth token will no longer be valid. So I'm okay showing you right now. So we have our binary installed on our machine. I need to connect up my instance with my auth token. So let's flip back over to our shell here. And let's take a look at the ngrok help real quick. ngrok help. Tunnel local ports to public URLs and expect tra inspect traffic. Here's some examples, and we'll set up ours in just a moment. And then here are the different commands. Off token, which is going to be the first thing that we run to make sure everything's set up correctly. And then we'll set up the tunnel. So here we go. Let me clear this out first. So I say ngrok off token, and then what my token value is here. Okay, this auth token has been saved to a configuration file. I'm obviously running a Vagrant box, and it's saved into a YAML file. So now my authentication is set up correctly. And the next thing we do is fire it up. Well, how do we need to fire it up? And if you watch the SME video, this is going to be just a little bit different. With SME, when we set up our webhook inside of GitHub, we just needed to give it the URL that SME gave us. Here, we're gonna to have to do something a little bit different. So, we first need to get our tunnel running. So let's flip back over to here and get that running. And what I ran, let me go ahead and stop this. What I ran was ngrok HTTP Jenkins colon 8080. And when I run that, notice there's nothing here about the webhooks or anything else. It's just Jenkins 8080. This is one of the reasons why ngrok has a little bit more power than SME. And we can talk more about that at the end. So let's start that up again. And what you'll notice here is it gives me 
some information about my account, the version that I'm running, what region I'm connecting in. There is a web interface. We're not going to take a look at that today. But here it gives me the forwarding URLs. And notice here that I have both an HTTP and an HTTPS. And that is being forwarded to Jenkins 8080. Now for our webhook, we're going to be using the HTTPS version. But I want you to notice something here with the free plan. Note that the base address for the Ingrok IO is FA9. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to start it one more time. Now it is 3C1. So with the free plan, if my tunnel goes down, I now have a new URL that I would have to update my webhook with. This could be a downside for an enterprise type solution. The paid versions of Ingrok give you the ability to have set domains. But for my free plan, for what I'm showing today, the mechanics are the same. So now my tunnel is set up and running. I'm going to make a copy of this. Now let's go over to GitHub and set up our webhook. So we'll go to our repository multi-branch sample app. I'm going to go to settings, webhooks, and this is another place that it's going to differ from SME. I'm going to paste in my base endpoint. Now this is where we stopped with SME. But for Ingrok, I need to give it github dash webhook trailing slash. Do not, do not, do not forget the trailing slash. Okay. I'm going to change this to application JSON. We're going to leave the SSL verify enabled because we get a valid SSL certificate with the Ingrok domain. And much like SME, we're going to say, send me everything. Well, let's add the webhook. Now, before I click on add a webhook, notice we don't have anything down here in the bottom. Let's click on add a webhook. And now you can see that we received a post to GitHub webhook. And the response back from our Jenkins controller was a 200 OK. So that means that we were able to pass through from GitHub through Ngrok to our Jenkins controller. For those of you that did not watch the SME video, I'm going to walk you through now how to set up the credentials. If you've seen that, skip ahead to the next section. In order for us to talk to the GitHub API and not run out of API calls, we have to set up a personal access token. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our profile, click on settings. In the left nav, we're going to scroll down, go to developer settings, and then click on personal access tokens. Now I already have a token set up that I'm going to be using, which is Jenkins multi-branch Darren Pope. You can see that it has four permissions assigned to it. But we're going to take a look real quick of how to generate a token in case you've never done one before. So you, you would click on Generate Token. You would give it a name. What is this token for? So like the way I had named mine was jenkins dash darren pope dash multibranch. That's the one I've already created, if I can smell, spell. But I'm not going to create that one. I've added four scopes in my existing token so that I can correctly make calls to GitHub and have the correct permissions. Now we're not going to set up another one here. There will be in the description of this video a link to a knowledge base article at CloudBees talking about what each of those scopes mean. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and we're just going to cancel for this one. So I have a personal access token. I already have the value. No, you won't be seeing that value. Okay. So what we are going to do now that we have our personal access token, we need to set up two 
credentials inside of our Jenkins controller. So let's go ahead and log in. We'll click on Manage Jenkins, Manage Credentials. We're going to set up the first credential is going to be of type secret text. The secret is going to be our personal access token value. This ID is going to be called Darren Pope GitHub PAT. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the description. So this secret value is just the value of the personal access token. The second credential that we're adding is going to be a username with password. The username is going to be my GitHub username. The password is not going to be my GitHub password. Let me repeat that. The password is not my GitHub password. It is the personal access token that I just created. And that looked a little short. So let me get back over here. There we go. Much better. The ID for this one is going to be Darren Pope GitHub, and I'll call this creds. All that looks good. So now I have set up two credentials, one a secret text with the value of just the personal access token. The second one is a username password where the password is the personal access token. We've got one more thing to set up before we create our job. Manage Jenkins, configure system. We are going to go down to GitHub, add a GitHub server. We're going to give it a name of GitHub. The API URL stays the same. The credential becomes Darren Pope GitHub PAT. We're going to click on Test Connection. And what you should see when you do yours is credentials verified for user Darren Pope. Your name would be your name. Rate limit of 49, whatever it is. You may see 49.99 because I've been using this a little bit. My token count is down right now. I'm also not going to check manage hooks because I have already set up hooks. Your scenario may be different. But for right now, I'm leaving that unchecked. Let's click on Save. Okay, for those of you that skipped over the credentials part, welcome back. For those that just watched the credentials, let's continue on. We are going to create a job. The name is going to be Multi-Branch Sample App. It is going to be of type Multi-Branch Pipeline. We are going to add a source of type GitHub. The credential that we're using is Darren Pope GitHub creds. And if it responds with user and whatever your username is, you're successful. If it gives you anything else, your credential is incorrect. You will need to go and fix your credential before continuing on. If you want to see how that really looks in real life, go and watch the SME video. It failed on me. So you can see how I resolve that problem. Okay, so now we need to add the, the HTTPS URL. So let's go back over here to my repository. Grab this. Paste that in. We'll click on validate just because we're here. Now this tells me credentials are okay. I'm connected to this repository, which is what I'm expecting. Now, this video is not about all the, the depths of integrating GitHub with multi-branch. This is just a lightweight pass of understanding GitHub from a webhook perspective. We're really focusing on how ngrok works in this video. So let's go ahead and click on Save. We can see here that we made an API call. We found the branch. We found a Jenkins file. So if we come back and take a look at this job now, we see that the main branch is found. The job is building right now, probably by the time it, I get there. Nope, it's still running. Okay. So we can see it connected via the API to get information. It's now going to be pulling in 
the repository. And then it does whatever it does here, which is a hello world. In this case, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now that we know our job runs correctly, let's take a look at one thing here on the left nav, multi-branch pipeline events. So we can see here there have been no events as of 1633. And it's waiting on events. So let's go and generate an event. Simplest way to do that, since we're only on the main branch right now, let's click on the README and let's make a modification to our README. So I'm going to call this new content. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. Before I click commit changes, let's take a look at our tunnel real quick. We can see right now that we've got three that have happened over time. So let's click on commit changes. There's a fourth one that just came in. If we come back over to our controller, we can see that we received an event. It passed down to GitHub webhook. It did the pull. Everything looks good here. Let's go and take a look at our main branch. And we can see that there was a second job run based on a push event to branch main. And that's it in a nutshell. By using ngrok, we have a very secure tunnel from GitHub, in this case, back into our Jenkins controller. Unlike SME, which if you wanted to just do random checks, you could find what other people are doing. With ngrok, you're not going to be able to do that due to the authentication that's happening to build that tunnel. If you have any questions or comments about this video, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs or at Darren Pope. If this video was helpful to you, please consider giving us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take just a minute, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.